Hello and welcome back. I am Ahmad and we are going to continue our modeling uh, rigid connection in ANSYS 2023 uh, version R1. In the previous video, we went up to this level and uh, the geometry is now ready. We can close these windows and here you don't need to save. Now we go through the model. When the model is updated, here you can see different colors representing different uh, surfaces and shells. The geometry is already updated and the material is the default. Connections, we have already different connections that are updated automatically. You can select and delete those and also I usually use the automatic connection or contact update off. First we need to define the contact at the end of the beam. These edges are connected to the end plate. Right click insert manual contact region and here I can hide this body from the side. I can select mode box and here you can select edges. These are as contact. Show all body. Then I can change this to surface. And by default, it is bonded. So for bonded, you really don't want to do anything. Just select and you have bonded connection or contact here. The same applies to the other plate. I can select and hide body. Contact. And here we can go to box selection. Then I can change it to single plate, show all, and this surface. The next is the connection between the plate and the column flange. For that, I prefer to turn off or hide these two beams. Now insert manual contact all of these faces as contact and all of these faces as target now if we look at this uh, if it is bonded there is no error or something like that but if you change it to frictionless, we had this in our TS top tutorial and modeling with ANSYS playlist. Then we need to define which side of the plate or face is going to be connected. Here you can see that uh, these two sides are top and they are not the correct face side. As a result, I changed this contact shell to the bottom also this one should be changed to the bottom here we can see that we have the correct sides of the faces to be connected the same goes for the other party we can select this one and also Then we can change to frictionless, bottom and bottom. The next is the distance between these two. I would like to keep this for now. We will see later how it looks like. Let's fix one of them. 
so here you can use the shell thickness effect or you can use the offset if we look at here the distance between these two plates is the plate thickness the end plate thickness which is 16 millimeter plus half of this uh, flange of the column which is 9.5 in total 25.5 so i have to change also this one but i keep it as zero then we will see how we can uh, spot this uh, in advance also we need to model the bolts a very common method for bolt modeling is using the joints i'm not a fan of that but it's very uh, a rigid connection between two bodies so for that you can come to here use the joint and then select This is the mobile part and this part as the scope or reference and here you can change this to general as far as there is no bending moment to be transferred i can set it to be in free all if you come back to geometry here you can see that the first three are uh, x y and z and they are completely gray while the others are completely with colors those with colors are free so it means that there is no rotational capacity about x y z but in x y z direction it is completely fixed and if you remember in the previous video we had this uh, name selection or name uh, group the reason is that here we need to do the same for almost uh, all of the bolts and we have 12 bolts so if it, there are 12 bolts we have to do this 12 times but you can use this automation object generator here i would like to use reference and mobile uh, I, I named them in that order and from 0 to 50 millimeter and then just hit generate here you can see that we have 12 bolts and also I prefer to put these in one group number three number four number five and number six so these six I put them in one group, name them as top. And then here, number 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So here I would like to have in the uh, order, I put this in a group as bottom then number 11 i drag it to the bottom number 8 number 9 number 12 and number 10 we can show all bodies here and also we can use zoom to fit the next is meshing i would like to have face meshing for the places that i do not want to have very fine mesh and then i would like to have a little bit finer mesh for the place that i'm interested in the results here we can select these two parts and assume that we are going to go with 20 millimeter for the main mesh size and here i can select n and if you are more interested to have finer mesh for the plates you can just 
select this or even you can use this type of box selection I can remove this as well as the other part remove this so here now I can select these two for another sizing and I can change them to for example 5 millimeter now we can generate mesh to check if the mesh looks to be fine it looks pretty good just check that and here you can see that we have finer mesh closer to our uh, study area now we can come back to here and have the contact tool as i explained earlier in the other video it's very important before we start running now we can run it if you remember we didn't close the gap for one of the frictionless contact intentionally to show that how it looks like if all the contacts are without any gap then this solution would take uh, shorter than this time because now we have a big gap 25.5 millimeter and it cannot find the penetration and the contact seems to be open here i want to show you how it looks like if you have a gap so the result if we look at here we can see that the uh, three contacts are completely closed penetration almost zero gap zero but the last one that we didn't feel the gap value 25.5 millimeter it's in yellow the contact status is open this may be acceptable but uh, to be honest it's not acceptable because it takes so long time and you need to go very tiny time that the fill is the gap is filled so for that reason it's better if we come back and change this offset to 20.5.5 and if you generate one more time you will see that the it's faster and here we can see that all are zero and white one more time checking our model it looks quite fine we can close this part the next is the symmetry plane if we zoom to fit here is the symmetry plane it means that yz plane is the symmetry plane here you can add the symmetry and from there you can add symmetry region i'm going to have the edges here and here you can see that the symmetry normal x axis it means that x is the symmetry uh, is the normal axis meaning that yz is the plane as a result the there is no changes that we need to apply symmetry normal is x axis it means that in x direction we do not have any displacement also we do not have a rotation about y and z other directions for example about x rotation is free in y direction displacement is free in zeta direction displacement is free if you remember we use the same principle for finding theta zero and m zero in um, video number 11 of this playlist so if you set this plane to be symmetry plane it means that we do not have any rotation about z that's fine now we need to have the fixed support 
here. Then we need to apply the load. Four faces is selected and here force I go with the component and in y direction so here we need to apply the total load so it was 15 kilonewton per meter times 3.334 which is 50 kilonewton minus 50,000 and also the other beam on the top force minus 50,000 good what uh, result are we interested total deformation stress contact tool to understand how it looks like also we are interested in finding the bending moment as well as the rotation so bending moment i'm going to select these edges i hide this body and i will go to box select mode select these edges from here and we can select geometry selection the same also i'm interested in the rotation about zeta axis so here you can see that even though we do not have any highlighted cell here in the details still it's a question mark the reason is that uh, we do not have the option available here for nodal forces to activate that you come to analyze the setting output control and here nodal forces select yes then you can see that it's ready to be run as uh, long as this uh, is with the linear material uh, it's faster than nonlinear material for sure and uh, the entire load is applied at once in the initial calculation to see that you can come to force convergence and here we can see how the load is applied you can see how fast it can calculate here you can see that in the t-stop playlist is started with 20 percent but here 100 percent of the load is applied in the first calculation and perhaps we will have the results quite fast also the calculation is quite linear it means that if you increase the load almost everything will be scaled so four and fifth and we have the results total deformation let's show all bodies as we expect in the middle it will come down about 18 millimeter equivalent stress 390 we are interested in the middle connection it's above 355 but it's in the region that we have built for weld also you can use uh, other uh, methods for example connecting directly as a surface from the beam to the end plate by a weld material or something like that uh, but it's out of the scope of our case right now if we go to the status uh, of contact tool here you can see how it looks like here we have the sticking of the beam to the end plate and also we have 
a sliding part which means that we might have some kind of prying force the reason is that if we come back to our hand calculation in our calculation there was not any kind of uh, prying force most of the time except for one case which which was very close to uh, failure mode 3 so the reason is that here the case is not in failure mode it's somewhere between so it, it means that when the top flange is in tension then it's very small and it is uh, supporting by prying force on the edges moment reaction 46 kilonewton meter and flexible rotation 0 0.13 degree this is according to connection to be joints it means that joints are completely rigid now let's have a look on the results for the bolts bolt uh, number one here 113 kilonewton number two also 114 or 15 kilonewton in zeta direction local axis number three 88 number four also 88 number five and number six eight kilonewton in compression we neglected that part now if we look at the y-axis here it has 99 kilonewton the total load that we have here is 50 kilonewton and here you can see that about 100 kilonewton is taken as shear force in this bolt if we go further the same value almost for here 100 then here we can see that it's negative and minus 63 minus 63 and also minus uh, 12 and minus 12 so if we have the summary it should be the same 2 times 100 minus 2 times 63 minus 2 times 12 exactly 50 kilonewton so 50 kilonewton is transferred for sure but the way of representing the shear forces here is a little bit debatable it shouldn't be that way that's the end of this video we went through the um, modeling and analyzing the connection with ANSYS mechanical APDL and we calculated the bending moment at the connection as well as the rotation we will compare these values with our hand calculation at the end of other possible uh, bolt modeling that we can use here uh, in the next video i will go through the uh, stiffness instead of using rigid bolt connection i will use a stiffness as uh, the bolt i will use a stiffness method for uh, presenting the bolts and we will compare also the results especially for the forces in the bolts thank you for watching see you next time bye